Hello and welcome to Channel Sports on Sunday. I'm Cecilia Omogwe, sitting in for Ken Chonogo in Lagos. Of course, Ken will be joining us uh, much later uh, from London. But I'm not be doing the show alone. Where he's in the house. But before I introduce him, we'll just take a look at what we'll be talking about today. It's 28 days to the FIFA uh, World Cup uh, taking place in Qatar. And also, we'll talk about the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. The Flamingos, how are they preparing for the semi-final clash against Colombia? And also, the Super Falcons, they've been drawn against a country like well, Australia, you have Ireland, and also Canada in that group B. We'll be taking a look at that group also. And of course, we also have uh, currently what's going on at the transfer market, especially having issues after players have been transferred years after. FIFA President Gianni Infantino is having a solution for that, the way they can have a central system so that the whole issues concerning transfer is, I mean, you will not be having court cases anymore when that is uh, fully implemented. Also, we'll touch down on the newly inaugurated a community that's the interim management committee for the Nigeria Professional Football League by the NFF our president. There's so much to talk about on Channels Sports on Sundays. So, Okwemi is in the house uh, this afternoon. Okwemi. Oh, thanks, um, Sisi, for having me on this blessed Sunday. Nice to have you. Quickly, uh, count down to the FIFA World Cup. Yes, it's 28 days now. It's getting closer and closer. Yeah, the, you know, the unusual World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> because, the winter world cup yeah, yeah, because uh, it's it just like the grand slam uh, yes. you start with the australia open in mm -hmm. january uh, you move to uh, the french open then go back to london, london then you end up you start from uh, australia and end Down up under. with uh, new york uh, so uh, but, but now we are used to having the summer world cup and uh, by this time we are preparing for maybe the december break uh, mm -hmm. christmas winter or break, whatever yeah. but uh, when we should have in that break when man should be resting because the, 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 the Sabbath was made for, for man, not man for the Sabbath. So, <laughs> here we are, but truly, truly, mm -hmm. truly, it will have been um, so wicked to have mm -hmm. played that World Cup in June, July in Qatar. Yeah, because of the weather. Oh, it the would weather. have benefited African countries, and we were used to that. <laughs> 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 All right. Now, the, the latest is the FIFA uh, trophy is actually traveling everywhere, and it's in Brazil. And that's uh, the last place we saw it just recently in Brazil. And you have, you know, legends, we have legends of the game actually, you know, touching this, those who have won it before is something to really uh, behold. So the FIFA it arrived in Brazil. And of course, there you have, I mean, the big boy. Who else? <laughs> So I think the, the story about this is that for you to be able to touch it, you must have won the World Cup. Because yeah. when it came to Nigeria last time, I couldn't even touch it. It wasn't a glass. Yes, uh, th that is Kafu, of course. And uh, that is the first man to play in three World Cup finals. Mm -hmm. uh, he came in for Giorgio in 1994, was there in 98, and was his skipper, uh, the captain in 2002. So he has held this World Cup on two different occasions. Yes. So for him, um, is, uh, is, is, is the norm. So you are saying we're not able to touch it because we have <laughs> never even played in the round of uh, uh, the quarterfinal round. So, and that brings me back to 2003-2004. Yes. Eimba won the Cup Champions League. Mm -hmm. We we saw the Cup Cup Champions League live, but like two years ago, we we're having a parade of the European Champions League. Mm -hmm. And I would say myself, is it a taboo for Nigerian teams to go back and get this uh, Cup Champions because? Uh, let's, it, 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 we should not be honorary trophy. You were mm -hmm. looking at an honorary trophy yeah. in Lego, but Kafu, he won this thing yeah. by hard work on two different occasions. Yeah, he missed it the third time. So um, Brazil is the home of the World Cup, five times winner, yeah. uh, the most uh, uh, multiple of winners of the yeah. World Cup. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing for those who have won it. I should inspire people who want to win the World Cup as well. And Brazil, obviously, is the team to beat. They are star power. I mean, all eyes will obviously not be on Neymar this time around because you have all the... All, I mean, you look at Brazilian team, you're wondering, uh, if Neymar doesn't even start, they don't have a problem at all. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I, that I, means yeah, yeah. favorite to win I what? think uh, they, they, had a, they made that mistake in, uh, when they hosted in 2014. 2014. And I could remember someone like Murillo telling them that after that victory against Colombia, that the person they will miss against the Germans will be Thiago Silva. 
that the, the, the where he sees the 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 weak link in that Brazilian team would be if Silva was not in that match. I would say no. Uh, Silva was a weakly captain. He was supposed to take the penalty against the Colombia and he rescued himself. But obviously, it was very uh, open oh, to yeah. everyone that it was not even Neymar that was missing mm -hmm. because. The, 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 the worst result in their World Cup history. So, Brazil now, they're everywhere. So, not, they are always pre favorite uh, okay. title contenders for the World Cup. But for me, I think I'll be going Dutch. Mm. Okay. All right. We'll leave in that and quickly touch down on African countries. Ghana, they are already, the fans in Qatar are celebrating for them. I mean, there's nothing else than getting into the semi-finals. They almost had it in 2010 when South Africa hosted, but this Winter World Cup, the fans are in Qatar dancing, showcasing their culture, uh, telling everyone this is really who we are to make to tell them that we're here. I mean, this is a country that actually stopped Nigeria from going to Qatar. But hey, give it to the fans, the celebrations, it's, I mean, you, you just want to enjoy yourself, especially, you know, when you're able to book a ticket at the expense of the Giants of Africa. Yeah, I think uh, you can't take away the Qatar, uh, the Ghanaians' uh, yeah. uh, community in Qatar. They have a, uh, a large larger community. community yeah. Larger than Nigeria. Yes, yes. Oh, then wow. I, I think also, um, with the benefit of insight, I yes. think uh, it was better for Ghana to qualify the first of Nigeria. When you look at what has happened to the Ghanaian city, okay. the worst performing currency in the world. So the Ghanaians, the Ghanaian economy actually needs uh, this effects from this war. So okay. I think uh, we should be our brother's keeper. They are in need now. Uh, the economy is in uh, doldrums. Uh, so I think the, the dollars from the World Cup will actually will boost go a the long economy. way in boosting the economy of the, of the Ghanaians. Could that have helped our economy if we had traveled, if we had gone to the World Cup? Because we are almost in a similar situation. No, no, right we, we, uh, since we are better, inflation-wise, yeah. all indices, we are now better, better than uh, Ghana. Ghana. But again, uh, the ones we have had in the time past, you know, our World Cup history is a uh, trip, uh, we go on a travel, miss one, go on a travel. So what has happened to the inflow okay. from those six okay. Uh, okay, World Cup? All right, since there's nothing to show for it, <laughs> let's just <laughs> listen to the Ghanaians, their targets for the World Cup. We just want to announce the presence of the Ghanaian team. You know, it's just like few days to the World Cup, but we are not getting the atmosphere. This, this is the atmosphere. So we are just trying to create awareness. We are getting, we are ready, getting prepared for this World Cup. We want everybody to know Ghana is already here, and Ghana is making to the next stage, to the next stage, to the semi-final. All right. I mean, semi-finals. Uruguay prevented them from going. I mean, Suarez. Luis Suarez is still playing football. Let's see if they can get that semi finals. Now, let's get into women's football. Starting off with the FIFA Women's World Cup draw. Samuel Amedu, a football writer, will be joining us to talk more about this one. When he's ready, we'll hook up to him live from Abuja. Um, but I mean, I mean, the draw, uh, when, when we saw the Group B draw, we were like, okay, Canada, come on, maximum points. I mean, that's the feeling. That's the feeling right there. Maximum points from that draw. We can see pictures uh, coming from the FIFA Women's World Cup draw where uh, Amanda Davis and, of course, Kali Lloyd were the one who anchored that. You also have a host of other internationals that were there. I mean, for instance, you have a perpetual culture. She uh, was part of yeah. those who went for the World Cup. USA actually smiling, and Kali Lloyd actually admitted that this might just be their toughest World Cup Come. ever because some players are leaving. You have younger players, Come. and countries are coming up. England beats USA. You know, at, at Wembley, immediately yeah. after they won the Euros yeah. in a friendly. So, more like it, it's going to be another tough one for them. But our focus today is obviously on the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Yeah, so I, I think for the Americans, uh, the, they were trying really hard, uh, too much to actually impress uh, President Trump because the issue they had uh, with the presidency and now that President Trump is out of the way. So I think they've lost their motivation. So we can actually see that uh, in their performance in recent time for the um, American team. But for the Nigerian side, uh, going up against the Canadians, uh, one you should expect one or two Nigerian players in the Canadian team uh, that is uh, taking. Then uh, the the what they've achieved, you saw them at the Olympics. Uh, so uh, that match will be a really testy one for the uh, Super Falcons. So I I think uh, it's not yet. Uh, uh, 
who won for the Super Falcons, I think, um, and don't forget again the disappointment of missing out of back to back uh, Olympic Games. Because for the female team, uh, female yeah. football, Olympic Games is like the other ego of the World Cup. So mm -hmm. if you can't attend the Olympic Games and you're there at the World Cup, that means uh, your, your, your level of uh, expertise is still suspect. So I think uh, the Super Falcons for all Nintendo and Popo should be the underdog in this group. Mm. On the door. Okay. Uh, Samuel Amede will be joining us now. If he's ready now, we'll just uh, take him up on this one. How far will Nigeria go at the FIFA Women's World Cup in New Zealand, hosted by two countries? That's the first time you'll be having it. Of course, Ken Ochonogo is in London. He will also be joining us on the program. First, I'll start up with Sam. Sam, good afternoon. How are you doing? Yeah, good afternoon, Sissy. Uh, great to be part of your Sunday. I'm doing very well. I hope you do too. Yeah, I'm doing cool, especially after seeing the draw. We're watching it live, monitoring it, see, to see where the Super Falcons will be, especially after the heartbreak from Morocco. Everyone wants to recover in New Zealand and Australia, enjoy good football, and see how far the Super Falcons will go. But from the draw, what do you think? Is it a respectable draw? Well, let me just mention that. The Super Falcons are the underdogs in that group. You believe that? Well, well I really cannot say that. Uh, unfortunately, we seem to have a lot of factors uh, bedeviling our, our international uh, stage uh, uh, campaigns. And I think uh, it's disappointing when you have a country who has been to every World Cup tournament and uh, still struggling to even make it uh, in good numbers, at least on the rankings. And I think these are probably some of the key factors. Uh, probably we haven't taken time to dig into and look through why are we really still struggling. Because at this point, uh, it's much like we should leave uh, competing in cup, uh, competitions because even winning cup competition doesn't even add anything. Uh, to, our, to, our, to our rankings. And why? Because teams we are competing against are practically by, uh, far below us on the FIFA rankings. So uh, at this point, I think, looking through the draw, I think uh, it's a very interesting draw. It's one that uh, everyone will feel probably uh, a few sign of relief. It's not probably as strong as uh, we've seen in 2019 or in previous ones. But at the same time, uh, we have very strong composition, tricky opponents in these tournaments. Uh, you have host Australia, who is one of the another high a very high ranking side they got to the uh to the to the semi-finals uh of, of of the olympics last olympics also canada who are defending champions uh the reigning champions of uh, uh the olympics and you know these are also another high ranking side uh on the fifa rankings so yeah. and you can't ignore ireland so ireland is also an emerging force i know for a country like that and to be a very experienced manager in very poor i think you you definitely need to really give them a lot of of kudos, uh, how they've managed to emerge, and now uh, they look uh, they, they're possibly the weakest team in the tournament. But at the same time, uh, with the amazing experience they've gained, and also the, the the consistent trainings and the games they are playing, I think you need to really uh, look out for them in that group. They could probably be uh, one of the, the the dark horses. But again, for Nigeria, uh, we never can say never. You know, we know how we pushed through in 2019. Uh, but again, not our uh, best number, but at the same time, it was exciting and possibly a massive improvement from what we had uh, in the last 20 years, at least getting to the knockout stages for the first time uh, in 20 years. So I think uh, this time around, we, we hope uh, the motivation is there. We also hope uh, in terms of quality, we have the potentials, but again, it seems we're still struggling to get to piece together uh, what our, 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 our quality team could be like. And I think it's taking a lot of time, and I think it's also probably Commenting to poor planning, mm -hmm. a lot of factors too uh, are possibly to be blamed to this situation. So I think it's uh, it's it's something one we think could look positive for us, but at the same time uh, we need to look back inward and see uh, what chances do we have in terms of preparations, in terms of the quality of players, and at the same time in terms of uh, the the. the preparation plans we have. We've seen a lot of games. We've seen players, tons of uh, new players coming through. But again, we're still struggling to even piece together what our squad will look like. And, you know, a lot, uh, just like Nigerians have been complaining, uh, as much as they are positive about Nigerians progressing with the talents, uh, with the bunch of talent we have, the concerns still also revolve around the technical uh, side of the, t of, the g of the of the team. So uh, we just have to remain positive for now. I think Randy Wardrum is in charge and 
Uh, we can only hope we won't see we won't see anything worse than we've ever seen. But again, we've seen that worst side World Cup tournament where we've lost six zeros and whatever. But I think at this point, I trust these girls with the motivation from the new uh, federation to to go as far as they can. But again, for for that group, uh, it's a very tricky one. And I must say, we lost to Australia in 2015. I can't remember. I can't forget watching that game and you know talking to the players after the match in in, in Winnipeg. They said they didn't play for each other. And especially coming coming out of uh, coming on the back of a 3-3 draw against Sweden. So uh, this football, we just need to look at how best we could get prepared enough and at least uh, put uh, forward the uh, best legs and ensure that, yes, uh, we'll fight everything out there. Yeah, talking about putting best legs forward, we seem to have the talent. Uh, because if you check what we've done so far, we've been able to have girls from the under 20. Immediately after they finish the tournament, we have up to seven of them now, you know, being able to get into the Super Four So Although we could say because you didn't have the full complement of the other players, but for them to be able to make it, that it seems that we have the talent there. But the fact that we've not been able to have our full players playing all the friendlies. If you check the whole of the FIFA window this year, the Super Falcons have been very, very busy. And this is something we haven't done in a very long time. Yeah, for, for me, I think I think we, we it's inexcusable. We considering not having our full complements. It's uh, for me, it's just uh, an, an excuse of one being weak, one being unprepared to situations. How do you expect? How don't you ever say that you won't have your best legs at the tournament itself? We never we, we lost to Shola in the opening uh, 45 minutes of the game, and shouldn't we be prepared for the absence of Shola? And this is this is. This is no brainer. We can't afford to plan. We saw Morocco. Morocco came to Daisha Buari with practically uh, home based players. They were planning to ensure that, yes, in events, some of their top talented players abroad that are not available, they have quality home based players who they've been training to take uh, take up the stage. And they did very well. They, they held their own, especially on the first, first outing since 2008. And not because they were hosts, but they, they, they against all, all the pressure of the fans and everything, they played out their hearts. And you see the quality. You could even find it difficult to differentiate between the home based players and the Morocco, yeah. Moroccan squad and the foreign based players. So we, we, we also part of poor planning that we don't think of what potential options we could have. In events, we don't have some of these key players to help us execute our tournaments and also execute it well. So we should also always obviously prepare for adventure when we don't have now we are we are always we are now focused on just having a scissor all the time. Now it has gone from a scissor we are saying no more no no more no no more all the time. So you know it it seems for me I think it's probably lack of uh, probably in, in, in unpreparedness and laziness on the part of coaches not thinking out of the box. What are the potentials? What are the talents we could see to replace or to to, to have as a backup when we don't have some of these other players? This is what countries like USA already they know their top stars are already facing us and they're bringing on board new players who could in the future hold their own and they are playing a lot of games every international break so this is it you they need the exposure they need the, the the quality exposure they need their experience to play at top level and when they're playing in top leagues and that is why it's exciting that we see some of our young players from the other 20 already moving abroad and at least sign Top professional deals. So this is what you need. This is the progression. We this must be monitored. These players must be followed, and they must be shown that yes, they are being cared and catered for. So uh, these are excuses that we can't give. You don't have your full complements. For me, I think it's a laughable excuse to give. You don't need your full complement, especially when you even go into tournaments, because injury or whatever situation could come up, and you may not. You may have to be without them. So right now, as it is, we don't really have a squad. You can say, oh, this is a squad that we can take to the World Cup, right? We're still trying to build at something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. Interestingly, we've had excuses. We didn't have, we don't have a full complement. But at the Af a Wafcon, we lacked nobody. We had everybody who we needed, uh, except for probably not having a partner, say, okay, here's who. But again, we can't quantify the quantity of players and the, the capacity of players we had in the team. It was our best ever squad going to any Women's Cup of Nations tournament so but again uh, again well coaches we always have to give reasons uh, much as excuses for whatever happens but at the same time at this point uh, we can't keep giving excuses as african champions especially going for a night uh, women's world cup all right let's see how it pans out i hope our uh, preparations be key. i mean do you have any question for sam or anyone yeah uh, uh, <laughs> sam. Take me ahead at that time. okay uh sam uh my, my fear again is this, you know, the Irish are coming uh, to the World Cup for the first time, but uh, when you look at the FIFA ranking, they, they are described in, in ranking, uh, why the Canadians are world number seven, the Aussies are 13, 
The Irish are 24, and the Super Falcons are ranked 45. So, and going back by the, our recent result, uh, do you think uh, we can spring up uh, a surprise when it comes to the World Cup? No, springing up surprises for me, it's a, it's it is a Nigerian thing. Uh, you're seeing what we achieved at the youth level. The you know, the 20s did that in Costa Rica. The the flamingos are are doing that currently in in uh, in uh, in India. So and we did that too also in in France uh, uh, three years ago. So uh, you couldn't imagine a France a French team that that, that defeated us 8-0 uh, earlier in April 2018. Uh, we, we had to sweat it out to even get a, a win, a late win against us uh, on their home soil. So it's it's what you see. It's the Nigerian factor. The girls will always come out to fight and compete strongly against any opposition because one, uh, they play with some of these players abroad. Our players are, are professionals. They play week in week out with some of these top players in their various. Clubs. Clubs, and they know the strengths of our players and they know the quality they do possess. But again, on, on our own side, what's the level of preparation are we having psychologically, mentally? What, what, what knowledge are we imparting? How much are we even following up on these girls? And who are we who are we looking to mix up with the other? All these countries, they know this very much well and they do a lot of background checks. They do a lot of, uh, even without you having games, you do a lot of work behind the scenes to ensure that you know games you need to get. And the quality of games we've also had recently, they've been top high profile games. Well, it's one thing to have high profile games, it's another thing to be prepared for it. So administratively, we have a lot to do. Uh, we have a lot to do. It's, it's probably a kind of structural problem because the truth is we are not short of talents. And if it's the players, Almost all our players now are playing abroad. We could hardly pick a player from the home front to fit into the Super Falcons now. Why? Because the game has evolved. Uh, it's not back in 2015 where you have almost all our players, 80% of our players were from the home front. Now it's a different scenario. And why? The game is advancing. It's a good uh, development for our game. At the same time, we are not making the best of those opportunities we're having. I think we just have to end it there. The administrators, they know what to do. Make use of the opportunities you have. And also, welfare will be key for some of those players because the feel as coming from their camp is really not uh, looking good. Sam, you hold on because when we get back from the break, we will be talking about the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup, the chances of the Flamingos to get into the finals for the very first time. Hey, welcome back. Ken Ochanaga is in London. Ken, good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, CC. I can see you guys are enjoying yourself. And Sam, Sam is just shooting from the hips from Abuja. <laughs> uh, hello, guys. Hello, hello, CC. Uh, uh, where is the fair? Where is there? Uh, okay, it's right here. I'm, I'm here, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I can see your fair. That, that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, do you want maybe one or two things to say concerning the Super Falcons? Their chances of getting out of that group. Yes, the Olympic champions are there. Australia got to the semi-finals at the, the Olympics. Also, they also the Super Falcons didn't get to the Olympics. But then, I mean, they're in that group. You have Ireland also in the group. Uh, sometimes, you see, when you look at the rankings, uh, uh, when mentioned it, uh, Canada is a super power. What I would like to know, because of course, they've not won it like probably say, okay, the US, US, Germany, the Japanese have won, have won the World Cup, but then they are the Olympic champions, and you, you don't, the USA were there. Uh, the USA actually finished on, because they, they beat Australia. So look at the team. The two teams, the one that won the Olympic gold, the one that came, that when you all, that is four, two, two of the semi finalists are in our, our group. You understand? The Irish that would think, okay, this one, that they could have our own the Irish are ranked ahead of us. We are, 40, we are ranked 45th in the world, but the Irish are just, they are 24th. Then you understand. But then, like we say, when we get the rankings, they are thrown out of the window. And yes. then uh, they, they, they create the understanding of the team. It's what will matter most at that point in time. We have confidence when our ladies represent us. I don't know. I, I, I'm not trying to be biased here. I'm not, I'm not put, talking down on the male. I, I think I'm one of them. But then when our daughters represent us anywhere, when our you know, our females represent us everywhere, they come with all their heart and give Nigeria them all. But it is going to be a very Herculean task. We are playing in Australia. You understand? I look at the host, New Zealand, Australia. I saw that that is a natural talk. And we you know they, they, they say, okay, you come and meet us. Canada, like we have said, there is no way unless anything happens. Canada is the favorite to come out of that group. So, but then uh, I think there is, is a small hole there. Some, some, some did mention it in what we were discussing somewhere else. 
that you know, that said, that said, there is, it said, you know, the, the ten best leaders. It might be, um, you know, that is what we're looking at. It's not we cannot qualify outright. Your first game, if you feel like uh, get three points in your first game, it gives you that confidence in whatever you want to do. But then we still hope that if we can't go in the first two, we can sneak in by the third best loser. I think we are good to go. And it's difficult for us. But then they let us not go there that uh, the Irish are superior to us, the Canadians are superior to us. And like, like Sammy said, we are playing pro. Our players are everywhere in the world. We are playing in Spain. We are playing in Barcelona, for goodness sake. We are playing in France. Leon and one of the best teams are there. So, uh, as I said, we hope she will be there. She's our iconic player. She's the best in Africa, one of the best in the world, shortlisted. The 20th best player in the world as at now. So I was 16. She was 16, yes. 16 mm -hmm, yes. best player in the world. So, basically, I think uh, if we have a leadership on and off the pitch, I don't know what in Niger. I think we'll get there. We'll rough it up, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm calm right now from, from your analysis. Okay, we'll touch that on the on the 17th. I mean, when we're talking about the fact that on the 17th, it may be hard for the Flamingos to beat the USA. But hey, it was done, and it was done in flying colors. I can say that because the U.S., they know how to score goals. 58 in CONCACAF during the qualifiers. They came to the World Cup. They scored 13 because they just won before that game against the Flamingos. By the end of the day, went into penalties after the Flamingos were able to hold on. I mean, they nullify their strikers. They couldn't get past one goal. They went to penalties. The Flamingos won. And now they will be facing Colombia. Mr. Ken, are you excited about this one? I'm already excited at where we are. Let me let me let us know this. Let, let me tell you this. When he, the, see, see, uh, remember in, in 2013, when when it was time, or where, or where we so even say this better. When it was time for us to play uh, to meet at to meet uh, at the Ivorians at you know in uh, in uh, uh, South Africa, they already bought the ticket to for our team to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so when we knew that after coming out from the group, you know we lost our first game against the, the Germans, and then we were yes. able to win the other two and qualify. I said our next one is against the USC. We have there packing the way we say in Nigeria, not packing our kaya, so let us go back to Nigeria. Sure you understand. But then against all odds, and it was us through at the end of 90 minutes and through penalties, and our girls survived. So we've gone this far. Uh, 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 anything can happen at this stage. Uh, I, I spoke with Sam again earlier on. Sam said, look, maybe we have played the Colombians before. There are no, any, you know, uh, they are nothing, it's, it's not as if they are invisible. So there is something there. I, I do believe that for now, I don't want to say, oh, we are going to win it. But even if we stop where we are, I think we have achieved a lot and we can build on this. The basic thing is this a developmental tournament. Yes. Winning it to boost you, that give you that confidence. So it's okay, but also make that to sell the players so the players can go, uh, the uh, club can see them and go over there. I'm not talking that on our league. But then they need to end their living outside the shores of this country, play professionally, get with better equipment, play with better players, see that the, the best of the players congregate in Europe. So that is where they will, most of the players will go to. And it will be good for us to lay foundation to say the future Falcons are coming out here. My, my, I'm happy that we're having the future. The, the Falcons are for the future, not for now. If they achieve now, it is only a plus. It is only a bonus for us. Yeah, I, I, lo I love that statement. I'll bring in his Sam here. We'll just take a look at the results. No, just the result, the quarterfinals results. We're expecting uh, maybe Tanzania may just pull off something, an upset against uh, Colombia, but it just wasn't to be. They lost 3 0 in, in the quarterfinals. For the, the Germany and uh, Brazil, that game ended in favor of the Germans. It was 2 0. And of course, uh, the game between Nigeria uh, won all, went to penalties, Colombia and Tanzania, and Japan and Spain. Spain are still on it. And of course, the semi-finals, and this is what it's looking like. Nigeria will be facing Colombia. And of course, you have Spain and Germany in the other semi-finals. Sam, uh, it's going to be, I mean, the final four. I mean, this is something we, we expect. We actually expected these teams to be there. Germany, Spain, but Colombia and Nigeria were the teams. Okay, they may not make it up. But right now, this is what it's looking like. The semi-finals, Sam, what do you think? so far for the Flamingos and their chances of making it to the finals? Yeah, for, for me, I must say it's, uh, it's an exciting tournament for us. We, we have really uh, pushed beyond our, our, our best. We, we have really overachieved. And realistically, for this quality of players uh, who went through the African qualifiers without considering a goal, uh, it shows uh, the, the, the determination within the girls. It also shows uh, massive 
uh, experience also from the technical crew, how they've managed to really stay, stay compact, how they managed to uh, stay united. You know, stages like this, uh, you could lose your cool, you could easily be distracted, but uh, they've managed to stay together. They've managed to uh, to, to play the house out, and at least uh, gladly with also the support coming from the Federation. I obviously feel uh, there's sort of good energy coming through from the Federation that is also in a huge way motivating these girls. Never will they say it's in the public, but again, uh, motivations are key. And at this level, uh, there's nothing more excites you or more pushes you more to really want to make your country proud than when you get some quality motivation from home in terms of financial uh, incentives and what have you. So I think it's it's really encouraging that we've come this far and kudos to uh, the technical crew, at least Ban Kole, he has really shown, yes, uh, it's not about how long you've done a job, but as a grassroots coach, uh, he has demonstrated that great quality. And, you know, we we're on some platforms when many were saying <laughs> the coach of US was using an iPad, Nigerian coach was sound, shouting, up and down but again uh, it's it's what works for you that that matters what works for you he's communicating to players and his players yeah. listen to him and i think this is uh, how it goes this is youth football you you need to respect uh what works with you in your environment and you must be able to communicate we mustn't copy almost everything at every time yeah. what works for him worked for him and worked for him to the end so uh, i think in terms of uh, the contest, semi-final contest, Nigeria and Colombia. Uh, I think uh, for us, we had an advantage here because uh, we, we definitely will have to avoid what happened in 2012. The same year, uh, we had the Anyide. Anyide, Anyide scored a brace that we yes. defeated Colombia on 29th of September uh, in the group stage game. And uh, we, we defeated them 3-0. They even had to score an own goal. And that was, uh, that was uh, we, we saw them, we finished the group that mm -hmm. year and yeah. we saw them uh, finishing third from bottom. I think it, uh, it was quite a fair run for Nigeria. We got to the final, uh, uh, quarterfinals before France. Uh, France des denied us by penalty. The same process in which we denied, uh, we denied the USA. That was almost the same way it went against France in 2012. So, and imagine the generation of the 2012 said they are uh, Alima Tuainde, you know where they are now. Ihe yeah. Su, who, who was joint top scorer, if you do remember. Uh, yeah. Joy Bukiri, quite a number of top talented players who came out of that 2012 group. That's just 10 years ago. And you know how time flies. So I think this group looks uh, to have huge potentials, despite uh, the massive growth of the women's game at global level, despite yeah. uh, the, the advancement in the game, technically and, and tactically, we managed, to, we managed to hold our own. I think this is a commendable effort, sheer uh, uh, discipline, sheer determination from these girls. And I think this is what Nigeria is made of. This is who we are. This is what defines us. And I think uh, going to, to the semi-final on Wednesday, I, I believe uh, the best is yet to come for these girls. I, I almost kill, always continue <laughs> to kick my, uh, my, my tables, kick okay. everywhere, trying to see them do better. I, feel the potentials in them and they can really yeah. do uh, better than what they've done. We almost had the same uh, routes with Colombia. Colombia too lost to Spain in their in, in one of their group games. And mm -hmm. you know Spain and Spain for a team, they are the defending champion and for me they are the team to beat. Uh, especially when you know we have a Nigerian who is captain in that team. The Nigerian blood we have is, is incredible. With Vicky Lopez who is yeah. also playing for Barcelona. A top talent we have been looking forward to just now but again uh, we, are, we are keen on that I know talking with the parents and Everyone around her to, to ensure that, yes, in the future we can have a grasp of her. But again, she's impressive. Late goals, 87 90, to bring, uh, to, to bring Spain back into the mix. Mm -hmm. so you can imagine some solid quality player you could have at that youth level already turning, 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 turning everything to go for Spain. So I think we have, we have like uh, Mr. Ken said, we have overachieved. We've achieved a lot. We just need to build uh, around these girls monitor and monitor their progress stay close unfortunately we don't have those such programs even in departments yes. and women's football we don't have those opportunities where we can always monitor our guests keep an eye on them see how they progress to the under 20s okay. and at least ensure they as soon as they turn 18 when they will sign professional contracts we they keep an eye on them whatever they are and keep monitoring right. their group. and this is it the transition we're seeing a lot of them during the we come with mm -hmm. some more than almost six players yeah. from the under 20 in 2018 playing at the, at the WAF continent and they've matured we need to encourage that growth and we can't afford to allow coaches to sit in sit sides keep follow costing on players let's make the let's open the bank let's create uh, options alternatives this okay. is what makes nigeria we can't we can't have this huge population 
situation right. or this yeah. huge depth of players, and we are struggling to have quality to, to execute games at the top level. So I think okay. uh, we have a lot to learn from this growth, and I think we do not need to get carried away by the success we achieve. We need to yeah. see how West we can learn and build on it. Yeah, it's all about building on it. Uh, before we wrap up this uh, on the 17 discussion, Kwame, I'll just get your thoughts on this one. Chances of Nigeria, you know, making it past the Colombians and getting into the finals. Um, unfortunately, we're in a rather contrasting situation. Uh, there is euphoria now in Colombia. Uh, their main national team, the female national team, just played Brazil in the finals of the uh, female edition of the Copa America. So mm -hmm. uh, it's like they're having the result. And... This present crop of players, uh, they didn't witness the glorious 89 set to 99-90 set. But they witnessed the 2014 set, the James Rodriguez of this war. So uh, when they qualify, uh, you could see the Colombians, uh, I asked some of them on Twitter, on Twitter, uh, the coach Matriana, they are most successful coach. The daughter is actually involved in uh, female okay. supporting any female uh, sport in Colombia. So there are these... Uh, Rousing the the, the, the the there is this anticipation in Colombia, so that could just work in favor of Nigeria because the pressure is already on the, on the Colombians. So, okay. On like Nigeria, just like uh, the 85 set, Ubadi set. Nobody knew when they left the country. It was <laughs> when they were playing, uh, knocking out coast, uh, beating Costa Rica, Guinea, and uh, the German. That was when we all woke up to, oh, these are Nigerian players. So, but for the uh, flamingos that uh, they are playing with freedom so i think we should uh, recognize that uh, they are having fun so let's just see but i want to believe the weight of expectation mm -hmm. on the colombians should act it's, against the colombia it's higher than us a good one so a good way to leave it there and quickly talk about what former players are saying concerning setting an agenda for the nigeria football federation but before we listen to that sam i mean thank you so much for being a uh, part of the program so we we'll have to let you go now so you Go enjoy your Sunday. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's a great pleasure to be part of the crew, uh, uh, Mr. Ken, and also uh, my able brother. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure Sam, talking with you. Sam, Sam, before, before you go, you know, I, I, I love that aspect of that, you know, iPad thing. You understand? We get, uh, when we remember, there's a big parameter, no pitch. Who was always writing and writing? And the way we were writing, the one they beat us for, they were beat us five times. My God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. all right thank, thank you thank you thanks <laughs> yeah it's a pleasure thanks for having me all and wonderful sunday to you too uh, thank you we hope to have you join us next uh, sunday to talk about the calf women's champions league because that's when it's starting another big one we'll be looking forward to next uh, sunday okay former players are setting agenda for nigeria football federation what do they want them to do is very simple focus on grassroots so that you don't have to go and start looking for players everywhere and also the technical uh talking about the technical director of nigerian football federation uh austin Egovo, and talking about I many submitting plans to the nff should have done better by now but then at the end of the day what are the projects well let's uh, take a listen to all of them and what they had to say concerning how the nigeria football federation can actually grow talent for the national team you can't have a person of my caliber in the technical department and my effect is not felt or impact is not felt so far which is, uh, is disheartening. But however, another era has come through, and the, the other administration did very well, no doubt about that. But everything can be 100%. But now it's a new board. We will resubmit our programs, and then we try to discuss and make sure we do the right thing now so that everybody will feel the department's impact and make sure we leave a legacy. It's all about legacy. Well, I think, I mean, it's not, uh, there's nothing hidden in, in football. I mean, we have, I mean, all seen what is happening all over the world. And I mean, we just have to try and do our own things. I mean, according to our, so there's no uh, amount of agenda that you can give. I mean, if somebody has any passion and know the, have knowledge and all that, definitely is going to come out. And I mean, that's what we want. I mean, we ex-footballers, we don't want this to die. We want, I mean, Nigerian football to go forward. And that's why we are doing everything that we are doing. I mean, this uh, kind of, I mean, supporting and all that. And then if we're called upon any any moment, any time for the cause of football, for the cause of I mean, uh, development, for the cause of I mean, making Nigeria great, I personally would be part of it. We are only we are already start telling NFF about the grassroots uh, development program. What we want to participate so that we can be able to put it straight. You can see how the younger ones want to be part of the game. They want to be footballers. With the program, I think it will help them. And when you do the right thing, 
you get the results. Now we don't have any grassroots program that is really functioning well. Um, how do we do magic? We can't do magic if we don't have any good platform. I started from uh, secondary schools, uh, festivals, uh, use phone and all those stuff. A lot of us did that and you can see where we ended up. Now we don't have that anymore. So the new president, I wish him the best. I've called him. We are here to help him out. You just saw what is going on now. That's what they have to do. Nigeria is very big and we are talented uh, people. Looking for players, I don't think Nigeria is a place that say I'm looking for players. But if you don't put the structure right, you can't get the players. It's all about having the right structure. That's what these players are talking about. And those who are with the board, allow them to do their job and then we'll get the talent. It's clear. Ken is already, already shaking his head. I'm sure he wants to butt in quickly on this one. <laughs> And uh, uh, when, when you see the legends there, yeah, uh, yes. uh, how do you say? It? And I love, I love, sister, I love, I love the way you picked it. You understand? Uh, uh, Egu, Egu came from the south south. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you see, you see Duty from southwest. Then you saw TJ from the north, and then you also saw Kanu from south. Is that is all Nigerian legends speaking? from all over the country. Uh, they came from grassroots. Mutu, the headmaster, uh, of where we tell you, you know, at the Olympics, how he did that. Uh, uh, I think at the Seoul Olympics also. And then uh, Eguavon, of course, started from the youth. Uh, his, his elder brother, Monde Eguavon, they were all part of those youth teams for Nigeria who, who moved over there. So uh, Akano, uh, the man with the heart of gold, the young Kame, how do you do that? What do you think about it? So you just go back to the grassroots. That is what channel television is doing. That is what the Kids Cup is all about. And wow, 2023, we are coming back. Home, so we are coming <laughs> bigger. <back home. laughs> Okay, I mean, I mean, you listen to the legends from uh, Osne Gwavoy to Kanu Wonko, and of course uh, to Tijani Babangida. You also have uh, Mutu Adekwoju, all of them are talking about how do we ensure that, yes, we have a plethora of talent, you not know, just represent the country. We are having to rely on, you know, looking for the Mula Lukmo across the world and come up play for Nigeria, something like that. Uh, there is nothing bad in having Nigerians uh, born in diaspora uh, mm -hmm. or Nigerians in diaspora. Uh, but again, uh, you have to have that conveyor belt. And we can't have over 200 million people. And that was what Kanu was trying to say. I can remember 89, people were playing principal score and prepare, getting, protecting themselves from injury so that they could go to Scotland 89. So, these things, we've always had these things. People uh, start diploma investors so that they can co play for the schools. Uh, we've not, we've, uh, we've jettisoned what has given us results. Uh, use phone, where was the last time we heard about use, uh, use phone? Going up, use phone was like the main thing. Uh, and now, you, you see, uh, see, see, in the past, I didn't see any parent taking their kids to football uh, games. Going to, but now you have people willing to take yeah. their kids there, mm -hmm. but you don't even have the structure. structure yes. I've talked about so many times about uh, table tennis. Once it's raised in Nigeria, you can't practice. It's as bad as that. So, a country of 200, I, I can I can sense their pains. I, what Kanu was saying, yeah. it was not far from the truth. So we need to add these things up. For England, after 66, 66, it took the intervention when they had their national football center. Uh, uh, commissioned by uh, 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 Prince Williams, you can see the result. The women are now uh, what uh, European champions. Mm -hmm. The men, they play almost uh, back to back. Uh, uh, the under 20, under mm -hmm. 17. Uh, the uh, uh, Lions themselves, they, they, they were in the semi final of the World Cup and finals of the Euro. So we can actually see what the they've progress. done. And the, the French 98 result and 2000 result was not uh, uh, a miracle. It was a, a product of consistent planning. They all, and that was what the English copied. They had their, uh, I think, Claire Fontaine also, they opened their own academy too. And you could see before 98, the French missed out from 1990 World Cup. They missed out from 1994 World Cup. So after their exploit in 86, when they got to the semi-final, they missed out back to back to back World Cup. And they had to commission the football center. Now what was the result? They swept everybody. France 98. France 98 mm -hmm. Went to uh, Euro 2000. They were they, they back to back. So and after the blip in 2002, they came back in 2006. And from then, they were world champions again. So we cannot do without 
having the proper structure for our grassroots. We had it in the past, and we had a galaxy of stars, which now we don't have. I remember Amadou once said something, that what we had then were a bunch of average players, but we criticized Amadou, but now with the benefit of insight, we all know better. Hmm. We'll end it there, right there. Drop the pen, as Ken would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we've been talking about the LMC, the IMC. You have a, a new management a committee that will be taking charge of Nigeria Professional Football League, and they were inaugurated in Abuja on Friday morning. And the task is easy, coming from Ibrahim Guso, that's NFL president. All you have to do is to ensure that hooliganism, things that actually destroyed football in the last six or seven years should be out of the way. Let's listen to Ibrahim Guso talking to the newly inaugurated board of the Interim Management Committee. The committee is to come up with a procedure for rebranding the league with sincerity of purpose, transparency and accountability, thereby creating an enabling environment that will ensure that the inherent benefit of it as a business outfit is fully maximized. Advise on the legal framework that will attract sponsors, opportunities from reputable or corporate organizations that will make the league a sustainable and viable brand. Draw up a modalities for the commercialization of TV rights that represents the highest value of the profit and loss for the domestic league. Restart the league and draw off a calendar in line with global best practices in achieving the desired objectives and ensure that every Premier League club has a good playing infrastructure that is TV friendly in line with CAF standards to ensure that the league is on television for better evaluation and transparency. Furthermore, the IMC, as a matter of urgency, should draw up a checklist of tools and activities as well as assign appropriate timelines within which they will be accomplished with a view to having a form of professionalism in the league, to put up a legal framework and set up modalities for permanent body to run the league appropriately, review the club licensing regulation in line with the FIFA club licensing rules, why incorporating legal administrative and financing system and putting in place structures that will guarantee the basic club licensing requirements, ensuring the players' welfare is adhered to strictly by the club owners, payment of players' salaries, contractual terms, and certified insurance scheme. All right, welcome back. Uh, you guys can join us on the program. You know how you do it, a full lens with displayed on the screen the numbers are to call so call us and tell us what you think about what the legends have said concerning uh how nff can actually develop the grassroots and see how we can build more talent for the country also the fifa under 70 women's world cup flamingo so i want you guys to show some love for the girls who are right there in india trying as much as possible to make the nation proud nigeria needs to trend for the right reasons and the only reason for that right now is simply football. Remember how Tubilo Amazon did it for two, year, two days. Nigeria was actually trending for the right reason. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to be known for. Also, you can also talk to us, I mean, Super Four Constances at the World Cup. Yes, they are not at their very best in the last, in the last few months. But hey, just know that these girls... It will rise again. <laughs> All right, um, well, I mean, you listen to uh, the NFL president, Ibrahim Guso, you know, really not what the interim uh, management committee needs to do. You know, start the league early and make sure it's back on TV, insurance of players. I mean, just have this policy when you talk about club licensing. It's not just club licensing in name, but in practical. Uh, uh, Sisi, you know, at times... Um we have to align theory and practice. Uh, so like Infantino, when Infantino joined uh, UEFA, he was their director for legal affairs and club licensing. So it was more, so today if Infantino is talking about club licensing, he knows what he's talking about. It's not just uh, he wants to, he wants to belong, mm -hmm. he, he wanna be. So, and again, uh, we must also give uh, credit to Gusso because this is more like a uh, breath of fresh air. Uh, I can't recall the last time uh, 
NFL talked about the league. It's more like uh, the old LMC. So for the LM, uh, NFL chairman to think the league is worth talking about, I think uh, a journey of a thousand miles. He was the chairman the, of chairman twice. Yes, <laughs> starts with the step. So no, what I'm saying is uh, anything league as you always be from the stable of the old LMC. You can hardly recall how many times the old NFL was talking about the league. Is that you shut down the league and go to Russia in 2018? Okay. So, but that someone has even added in the agenda front burner as a front burner issue. I think uh, okay. let's wait and see and see how far it pans okay. out. Okay. All right. Theophilus is calling from Portaco. Theophilus, good afternoon. How are you doing? Hello, Theophilus. Are you there? Okay. I think we've lost him. Okay. Um, Quickly, uh, let's listen to, before we get Ken's reaction to this, but let's listen to what Egbenga Legbele, that's the IMC chairman, what he's also promising uh, the, the nation on how they can really revive the league and make it profitable. Administrators should start by administering very well. Club owners should ensure standard best practices. Good fishes, players, Welfare. For this, as we qualify for CAF Championship or Confederation Cup, you expect the away team to come and play in your home team, uh, your, your home ground, and you don't have a good facility. Is that not the minus for Nigeria as a country? That's a big minus. Again, our officiating officials should ensure that matches are won based on merit, not by awarding matches based on other, model, other, other mundane, mundane reasons. Our journalists, our friends, Support reporters must ensure credibility in their reporting. Uh, you must <coughs> base everything on what you think is best for the system itself. And the supporters' club should realize that the difference between football fans' club and gangsters. That's a difference between supporters of a, football, of a football team and area boys. So, attacking referees, or disturbing. Well, offici officiating officials during matches should not be a, a recurrent in our system in Nigeria anymore. And again, the players themselves at least must play according to rules. It is up to us, but I say it is, the it is a problem of everybody, every one of us, and it is those of us in the system too that can solve it. So we must engage ourselves in partnership and make sure we resolve all these pro legal, legal problems. And we must ensure again that. Our Football matches are back on television. Uh, Akbar Amin just said that's the most important <laughs> thing. That's what everyone <laughs> wants to hear. <laughs> Ken, I mean, what do you want to hear? Did you hear something that he just said? I mean, everybody wants uh, the league to be back on TV. That is what is most important. And as, oh, Theophilus is still on. Theophilus, uh, good afternoon. How are you doing? Okay, I, I'm not sure TV Loss can join us today. It seems he's having a problem with his network. I can I mean, you heard from Agbenga Elegbele. I mean, he actually spoke, uh, spoke the minds of most Nigerians who want the league to be back on TV. Yeah, uh, 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 two things. Please, just suppose two things. Uh, 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 the football, our league on television. But then our league on television with the sand filled with fans. He said, Supportership is not gangsterism. It's not area boys. You are, you are a fan of me and area boy. So when we call violence, when our, 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 our parents, when our fathers, our mother, our kids, you can take your kids to stadium just to go and watch football, buy ice cream, drink Coca-Cola or whatever brand you want to drink, soft drinks, and come out, then you are talking about something here. You are saying, look, the place is safe. Uh, as we are watching matches all over the world, that is what we want to do here. That is what we were doing formally. So, if, if you don't, if you, try, if you can bring the fans back, and the fans also at home can also watch, then you have increased the fan base. That is what they are saying here. Um, I spoke with uh, a lot of them, and they're like exactly what they are, what, what, what he said. Is some of them are saying they talk refined. What we're talking about refined club life system. There are tennis, There are minimum. There are minimum things that you ought to do. And then for you to have it there, very, very minimum. So these are the basic minimum that is required. When professional football, uh, I think that was the Olukome panel in 1978 that ushered in the league, the first of all league in 1979, the Embedded Insurance won, 
part of it was that the recommendation was that the clubs within the first five years, every club will have a stadium. Right now, how many clubs, not even the great Enyimba, has a clubhouse? They don't even have their second. They don't have, a, you know, their secretary. When you go and music, this is where the person is meeting. Let us go and meet him. You understand, you know, the clubs will just go somewhere in the stadium where they meet and come out. And that is not what we are talking about here. So they are saying club licensing is what they are going to refine. The refined one, they are saying players' welfare, pay the players as at when due, not all players. It is so disgraceful. When we see players walking on the streets begging, I don't want to mention club names, but you will see it carrying placards and saying, this is what we are talking about here. It is not what the issue here. So they will pay them. Sponsorship drive. The guy said something right when I spoke with him, one of, the, one of those uh, IMC members. He said, we are going to have a strong sponsorship drive that will outlive the IMC. You understand? Not, for, not just for now, but we outlive that the IMC will be self-sustaining self for a period of time. Transparency and accountability that to restore confidence in investors. And I, so the issue of officiating, which I just said here, is also very key. If people feel that you have not used your whistle unjustly, for goodness sake, how will they attack anybody? But even those attack, security is key, and then the welfare of the players are key. So they have spoken. Okba says it's a fresh of bread here. Let us see how this bread here will permeate the system okay. and you know uh, and give birth and you know uh, a herald. A new era of Niger that a Nigerian football league, which is the key to remain what it is as a fulcrum of us of our football development in Nigeria. All right. Let, let's just hope we can actually uh, do that. I mean, try and revive it. Kelvin is calling all the way from the USA. Kelvin, how are you doing? Yeah. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> hello. Hello. I can hear you. Yeah. Go on, please. Hello? Yes, I can hear you, Kelvin. Go yeah, on. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I, first of all, I just want to comment on you guys. You guys are doing an awesome job. Thank you so, so much. And, Thank you. Um, secondly, I was actually watching that game with my American friends. And they were so sure that they are going to win the game like they would. <laughs> well, I was sitting with my friends watching the game, and they were telling me they are going to win Nigeria. I said, no, I know the Nigerian spirit. And luckily, I'm so happy we won that game. So I'm just trying to like have, like, um, give, give the guests more encouragement, like give them more, like let them have more facility to do so that at least we can go all the way to the final goal. Please come back to Nigeria. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Kelvin, for joining us all the way from the U.S. Thank you. All right. It's all about bringing it to Nigeria. See if the girls can actually do that. Yes, uh, Ken talked about tra transparency, and that's what uh, Guso also talked about, transparency. And now, FIFA President Gianni Fantini is trying as much as possible to ensure that there's also transparency and accountability when it comes to the transfer market. He doesn't want that fraud to be there anymore. And he's been working on this for a very, very long time. And so that's why they had to create a centralized clearing house. Let's uh, take a listen. A couple of years ago, uh, as part of the reform of the transfer system to introduce what we call the FIFA clearing house, which is essentially a place from which all payments related to transfers will uh, eventually be uh, going through. Uh, why is this important uh, and where did we start? Well, we start with uh, the payments for the training uh, compensation solidarity mechanism for, yeah, for players who have been uh, transferred. It is important uh, to highlight that. Why? Because, um, uh, and I speak generally about the transfers in a second, but first about the young players. Uh, it's important because uh, the work that training clubs are doing all over the world is, of course, crucially, crucially important. And according to the FIFA transfer regulations, uh, who are in place since now um, around 20 years or a bit more than 20 years, uh, training clubs are entitled to receive a um, uh, which is uh, uh, an amount of around 400 million 
approximately out of uh, the transfer fees which are paid uh, in a normal season. Um, now, the reality is that instead of these 400 million going to training clubs only, maybe 60 or 70 million are going effectively to the training clubs. So this money gets lost. Why is this happening? Because training clubs often are smaller clubs, uh, sometimes amateur clubs, they don't have the resources to go and ask uh, for, for the money, which they receive, of course, after lengthy procedures uh, if uh, they request for it. So we have tried uh, and we've decided to uh, autom how do you say, automatize, I don't know, to make this whole much more uh, uh, automatic. Just make it more automatic. That's what they're trying to do. So it says only about 60 million and 70 million of estimated 400 million owned to clubs. They've developed players so far, but then they don't really get to enjoy it. So that centralized clearinghouse is going to help bring transparency to the transfer uh, market. What do you think, Kwame? Yeah, uh, Infantino is talking from experience as a proper football person. Uh, having been director of legal okay. affairs, we will have seen a lot of, a lot of cases and um, also a director for the club licensing for UEFA. Okay. So um, it takes you back to something that happened in 92, uh, when you have a certain... Uh, okay, Jamaica. Let's just quickly take this caller. Okay. Uh, Kotmaso is calling from Mina, Niger State. Good morning. Oh. Good afternoon here. The US yeah, good morning. Sorry, good correction. Morning. No. It's not Kot, it's Kot Mansour anyway. Okay, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, first, I want... Hello? <laughs> yes, hello, can you hear me? Okay, yes, you're on. Okay, I want to sincerely congratulate the Flamingos as one time coach of the team. And uh, I could remember 10 years ago when we lost in Azerbaijan. Um, it's very, uh, it's not easy. Now, uh, the past memory, now we have break the jinx. Uh, just like what Sunny said, um, is the girls to come, they are now, and to be able to remain focused to get the best out of it. No team is not beatable as far as this very state the team reach. But again, we can't take it away that the current Nigerian Football Federation board, we need to go advance on what we are doing because. Somebody like me, of course, I have called you under 17, under 20, up to the Super Falcon. Really, in coaching in this part of the world, we don't deceive ourselves. And uh, definitely, we need to get advanced whereby we have the performance analysis, data analysis, and what have you, a lot of them. Uh, we are lucky to be able to be the realizers of the truth. And uh, we can be able to beat Colombia. History can still repeat itself. And I'm glad, I'm happy the, the Nigerian Football Federation president is, is spoke with the girls and he assured he's going to be with them on Tuesday. That is from the new board. But again, yes. I want to appeal, I want to appeal to him and his board to be able to look into because the women football is far behind. Uh, you will agree with me and the viewers will agree with me. Yes. In 2006, when I was appointed as the head coach of the Nigerian under girls. Yeah. I want to appeal to them to be able to look and let's have that really on that 13 years and on that 16. That right. will give us more better gliding feature. And okay. that is just development in right. the grassroots. After yeah. all, I'm only a rookie coach. What did I know? I'm only learning. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for that contribution. But then uh, we need to leave the studio. Now, just wrap this up quickly, Okwe, I mean, before I go to Ken. Just uh, 30 seconds. If yeah, it's to with the uh, coach Manso said it again. There's tall grassroots football with the under 13. So I can only with the super, uh, the super flamingos or the best against the <laughs> Colombians. Yeah, can. Yeah, we need, we need, we need, we need that that Infantino clearing house in our football. So okay. that transfers, players will not play one season, you play for two clubs, and somebody <laughs> will claim. If you go to the clearing house, or well understand clearing house, or he's a banker, we we'll know where you are coming from and where yes. you are going. Thank you, Sissy. This place will be quite marvelous. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy here that I'm relaxed that you, are, you, you guys are taking charge right here in the studio. <laughs> so enjoy your holidays, right? <laughs> okay, I mean, thank you so much for coming on the program. It's my pleasure, Sissy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cecilia Mwangwe. <laughs>